This is the brand new Akai MPK Mini Play MK3 and this is the not so new MK2. Today we're going to run through the design and features of this new Mini Play MK3, compare it to the previous MK2 model and see if it's worth the upgrade. So before we jump into this comparison, I will be giving away both of these MIDI keyboards to two lucky subscribers as soon as this video gets 1000 likes. So if you haven't already subscribed, please make sure you do so and also give this video a thumbs up. To get straight into things, when you purchase the new MPK Mini Play, in the box you get the MIDI keyboard itself, a USB cable to connect it to your laptop and some additional software including MPC Beats, Hybrid 3, Mini Grand and Velvet. The previous model didn't include half of that. Just including MPC Beats this time for all the beginner beat makers out there, already a step in the right direction. Since this is the MPK Mini Play, we don't have to connect this device to our laptop and load VST plugins for it to generate sound. All you need is four AA batteries, switch the power to battery usage and we have sound. Sounds pretty good. Now bringing in the older MK2 model, the first difference I spot is the size. The MK3 is definitely a little bigger and on the side the new model has a slight lift to it giving you that synthesizer feel when adjusting settings. Now I personally don't use the features of a MIDI keyboard as much as I should but one thing I'm sure we all depend on is good quality keys. The keys on the previous MK2 model feel really cheap and plasticky and there is no real touch sensitivity. The keys on the new model definitely feel way better in terms of quality similar to the keys of the MPK Mini MK3. In terms of layout, on the top left you still have the joystick, appreciator, octaves and full level note repeat. One thing I can say is that I prefer the older buttons. The clicky sound of the new buttons just don't do it for me. Moving on to the drum pads. Akai have adjusted the size of the new pads to fit in the knobs that used to be on the side of the older MK2 model. I must say, I personally like the look and feel of these pads. They are slightly small, so for some of you, it might be a deal breaker. Like I mentioned earlier, one big change from the older model is the repositioning of the knobs. Compared to the previous MK2 model, the quality of these knobs is next level. I also really like how spacious the layout is. On the in the previous model, all the knobs were tiny and on top of each other, where you now have the volume knobs separate from the rest and the feel of the knob controlling the screen, yeah, it's just much better. Otherwise, we have the same layout again with a slightly bigger OLED display. There isn't much difference in the variety of onboard sounds compared to the previous MK2 model, but one huge difference is a much bigger speaker. So making a MIDI keyboard that plays sounds on its own, this is what you want. This new model does require an extra AA battery because of the bigger speaker, but otherwise for $150, this could be the best budget MIDI keyboard of 2022.